Hey, I'm Harold Sports Writer Manny Navarro here at St. Thomas Aquinas High School. And I'm Andre Fernandez. And this is the Gridiron Report. Alright, Dre, so we're down to the final four. How did we get here? Let's start in class 8A. By getting 19 in a row, right? <laughs> That's there you go. Head. There you go. By getting 19 in a row, right? Mr. I can't miss a, uh, a pick. Must be the beard. Yeah. I'm still sticking no, with no that. No shave theory. November. It's a no lose. I'm not, the, uh, till, I'm not shaving until the next weekend until the season's over. Don't lose December. That's what we said. Don't lose December. That's right. <laughs> uh, that goes for all these teams, especially. <laughs> Dre, last week, you, you nailed the uh, Columbus Flanagan prediction 16 to 12. Columbus, you've been on the Columbus bandwagon for a while. Uh, what did you take away from that game? That's why I've been perfect with the picks. I mean, those are, <laughs> seem to always be the push games there. But no, in all seriousness, though, I took from that is that, like we were saying, we had the last two weeks with Columbus, we've said they can win these games, but will they? Will they handle everything? Will, will, they, will, will they not have something come up, make a mistake, you know, let the, the environment disrupt what they know they can do? That's happened to them in the past. Not this year, though. A lot of it is the maturity of their quarterback, Tucker Byrne. It's that defense. That defense has been downright nasty in the playoffs. They shut the, these teams down. Last week, 12 was the highest point total they had given up in over a month. And Flanagan offense averaging 37 points a game. And a, exactly. A very good Flanagan offense that you're going to see a lot of in the future, even if they change a few faces there. That team is a team that is going to be in that mix for years to come. So what a job by Columbus. And now brace yourself because now they have to go to Orlando. It's a Popka, a team that's already been there three years in a row. They have more experience handling that state championship atmosphere than they do. But we'll see what happens. It should be interesting. Chris Merritt's group. One thing I'll tell you, they got a very good kicker, that Joey uh, Togieski. Joey Togieski, yeah. He's a yeah. member of the, their state championship soccer team that won last year. So he already has a ring. Now he wants a football ring. We'll see what happens. Who would have thought the kicker would be leading? Uh, the kicker Columbus. would have more jewelry than the rest of them, right? <laughs> yeah. well, maybe not for long. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, 7 8 right here, St. Thomas Aquinas takes care of business, 45 7 over uh, Tarpon Springs East Lake. We thought maybe this would be a closer game than it turned out to be, but I mean, Aquinas blows everybody out. In, in fact, uh, starting defense hasn't given up a touchdown since the Miramar game. That was game number three. I, I'm done picking close games with these guys. <laughs> I'm done. That's it. I mean, they, there's no one that can stop them. I mean, right now they might beat some college teams the way this defense <laughs> is playing because. It's almost a college defensive front out yeah. there. I Five mean, they're, guys up front, FBS offers. I mean, yeah, they might Nick, as well be at Nick this Bosa point. Nick Bosa and uh, Brandon Boyce is headed to uh, Duke and Wyatt Ray and uh, you name it. You name it. And you know what's interesting? They get free we got donuts. College coaches standing around Se out here right now. I mean, Seven they're, shutouts they're, this they're, season they're, by this Aquinas <laughs> defense. Uh, I know they gave up a late touchdown here. The second team unit did, but. Whenever they do shut somebody out, they get free donuts. So it's been seven Saturdays where the defense gets free donuts uh, from, can, from can the coaching I, can, staff. Can I jump in the time? <laughs> can I, uh, you know, put myself young again? Come <laughs> you play over here, maybe? Get some free donuts. I'll every... just punt. I mean, I'm not good enough for, for, to do anything else here. I'll just be the punter if they want. But. Well, they, uh, they didn't hang up a donut on East Lake, but they still won 45-7. Yeah. 6-8, uh, this was the big game. Central goes on the road, wins at Mainland 31-21. You were there for this game. What did you see? Yeah, I mean, I, I saw a, a team that basically they, they're just ready for anything at this point. I mean, we had their doubts with them early in the year. We thought, you know, how would their running game handle everything? <laughs> 300 yards per game combined with these guys. I saw an Anthony Jones that, okay, we talked to Roland Smith on Monday. He said probably the only difference between him and his cousin Dalvin Cook is that elite breakaway speed once he's in the open field. But outside of that, it's almost like watching the same guy. Yeah, Cedric Miller's been huge all year for him. I mean, it, Cedric Hopefully. Miller's come in. I mean, he's the workhorse back. The combination is there. But this defense, I mean, I, I, the, the story I did a little week ago was about the 71 sacks. It's at 79 now because eight times they were able to get in there against a very good elusive quarterback, quarterback, elusive quarterback at Mainland who's going to be back. He was only a sophomore, Denzel Houston. And it seems like Central takes, always takes maybe like a quarter and a half, maybe the first half to really get, get rolling. But once they do, simple over. defense, running game, and game over. And we might see the same story again with this Armwood team when they face them this week. We'll break that down next. Plantation American Heritage, maybe the best finish of, of all the games this past weekend, winning on a game-winning field goal, 38-yarder. Uh, Talk a little bit about uh, where Heritage is at. It seemed like a nice wake-up call against Orlando Bishop Moore. Yeah, and uh, let me give a shout-out to your backup quarterback this season, David Ferronis. Yes. He, he, got, he caught the bedlam. If you haven't seen it yet, go to our YouTube channel. 
he got the reaction of everybody running out there. Oren Millistein's kick saves Heritage because it got a little dicey there at the end. 17-7, but I think a lot of that, this Bishop Moore team came in undefeated. They weren't afraid. They, were, they hung tough for most of the game, and I thought I think maybe they were better than some of us realized. But from talking to Coach Rumpf, he thinks, you know, always a coach says you don't want to be in that situation where your season's on the line. But he was happy that this team got a wake-up call because, like you said, the first three weeks of the playoffs, cruise control. They were, there was no challenge at all. This might have refocused that squad, kind of woken them up and be like, okay, we need to really play at our best for four quarters. And here comes a very good Godby team that, that we talked about earlier. State champions two years ago. And they've got five D1 commits of their own. It's a good program. And, of course, uh, Booger T. Washington pulls off the trifecta. Three, third state championship in a row. You were up there in Orlando at the Citrus Bowl for that. Uh, talk a little bit about tornadoes. I, I don't understand how you win the national championship last year. You go 15-0 this year. How are you not in the national championship discussion? You, well, you are in the discussion because they are number three in the country. But at this point, it's just the pollsters all year have felt that a Bishop Gorman squad was a little bit better than they are. They ran the Did table out Did they beat Bishop Las Gorman Vegas. last year? That's what I'm saying. They beat them last year. I'll say this. They had a few teams that were jumped ahead of them even as they were winning. That's the part I didn't understand at the beginning of the year. But maybe that's why we're having this Final Four out there. Or not Final Four, the, the Bowl Series. The BCS, right. Kind of their own Bowl Series out the, the, there in the, Boca. The, replacing the BCS with the four-team four playoff in college football. But I'll say this. On that subject, my feeling is it's a shame they can't bring in California and Texas and even that Bishop Gorman team. Like, you know what I want to see? I want to see a Bowl Series like what they're doing with Booker T, maybe this squad, Central. Play, played at the Rose Bowl right before the, uh, the, the playoff. I want Bishop Gorman, De La Salle, and Allen, Allen, Texas, in that with to T. face Booker T Central, maybe these guys if, right. they're, if they're invited, something like that. Then you could have a true national championship crown. But until that happens, we're still going to be having these back and forth debates as to why Booker T is not the back-to-back -back national champ. Congratulations to Tim but Harris Jr. He did a great job. He pulled it off.